Hey Roblox here and in this video I'm gonna show you how to disable the controls of a character in Roblox Studio. You can use this technique with buttons, with proximity prompts or in my case with a touch event. So when I step on this um, part a function called move to is called and lets the player walk to this destination part to this yellow part in the back and while the function is active I cannot control my character at all let's try this like that so my character is walking i press all the buttons nothing happens and after he arrived this destination part i can control my character again okay let's start first you should create a folder in your workspace simply click on this plus icon and then on folder so and then rename your folder to something like disable controls okay then insert a part in your folder simply click on this plus icon again and then go to where is my part uh, let's write it down like that okay this is my first part i will change the size to let's say five one and five but that doesn't matter anyway and then i change the color to something like toothpaste yeah that sounds good <laughs> okay and then i anchor my part as well okay so i call my part um trigger part and then I duplicate this part with Control D and put the other part in front of that. And I rename this part to Destination Part. Okay. And I change the size of this part to, let's say, 1, 1, 1. Okay, and then I also change the color to, let's say, something yellow, but that doesn't really matter anyway. Let's put this destination part a little bit further away. I think like that, it's okay. And then we have to create a script, our first script. Okay, uh, click on this plus icon uh, on this folder, disable controls, and then add a script like that and rename your script to i don't know you can choose a name whatever you like um disable controls script that's my name and then delete this line of code i have already done the scripting work and i will simply paste the code into the script let me increase the size a little bit okay that should be fine i guess so i will explain the code now um with this line you get the player service and with this line you get uh, replicated storage we need to put our remote event which we create in this line in and the replicated storage where is it there because all objects in this storage are available for players i mean clients and for server as well if you put it in here like server script service this uh, object in this server script service are only available for the server i hope that makes sense then we need to select our trigger part which we do with this line of code. So script.parent.trigger part, which is this script.parent.trigger part. And then we need to select our destination part, which is this destination uh, script parent destination part. And we also have to use debounce because um, I use the touch event in my script. And the touch event can trigger several times within a second and that's why you have to set a debounce okay in this line of code we are listening for the touch event if something touches our trigger part then we check in this line of code if the parent of our touching part is a humanoid and if it's a humanoid and debounce is false then we set debounce to true uh, we need to do that because 
uh, we have to make sure that these lines of code are not executed again before they were executed by the first touch event. I hope that makes sense. Okay, then we need to, to get the player. I can do that um, from the player service. And then I have to define my action, which is disable um, at first place. Okay, then after that all is done, I have to fire my um remote event and i send the player and the action which is disabled okay after that i use the move to function to send my player to destination to the position of the destination part and if this function is finished i connect um a function and i set action to enable and I fire the next remote event with the player and the action again. And then after all that is done, I set the bounds to false so that the next uh, touch event can um, run again through these lines of code. Okay, this is our first script. We need another script as well. You have to insert this script in starter player and then starter player scripts and it has to be a local script so click on this plus icon again and then add a local script um, rename this script to controls like that and then remove this line of code I have already done the scripting work, so I will simply paste it into the script. Okay. Um, basically, I get the replicated storage away in this line of code. Then I get the players. In this line of code, I get the player from the local player. In this line of code, I get the controls from the module script, which is located in the player when the game is running. And this is basically my remote event, which is later on stored in replicated storage. Yeah. And when this remote event is fired, um, it connects a function. And then I simply check with a if statement. If um, this remote event gets the action disable, I disable the controls in this line of code. And if it's get the action enable, I simply enable the controls again. Okay, let's test our script. Let's start this game. Okay, there is my player and here is my trigger part. Let's tap on this trigger part. And as you can see, my character runs to the destination part and I can't control them while he is moving to um, the destination part. So let's check it again. As you can see, it's working perfectly. So another thing I want to show you, the controls module script, uh, the location of it. So simply run your game and then go to players and then select your player and again, then go to player script. There we go. Here's our player module and I simply get controls of this player module. Okay, that's it for the short tutorial. Thank you for watching and bye.